Hi, my name is Wojtek Kołysz, I'm with Mindsellers, and I'm lucky enough to work with experienced and talented product designers, which gives me an opportunity to pick their brain a bit. A lot of designers are terrified of failure, of their designs not meeting their expectations, or not meeting the expectations of their clients, or maybe their educated guesses, well, not being educated enough. Clients and other stakeholders, on the other hand, are afraid of failure because it means they will need to get more resources, more time and money. So, they expect the designers to be fail-proof, which, you know, makes the designers' anxiety even greater. This way of thinking about product development is inherently faulty. Today's guest, Mikołaj Wiewiura, who is a senior product designer here at Mindsailors, will join me in discussing fail culture and why it's important for us to embrace failure in order to win in product development. Let's dive in. Mikołaj, so is failure a good thing or a bad thing? How should we look at it? It always depends, but I think that we should better answer um, different questions or give you an examples or some examples on yeah. what is failure in product design. Okay. Um, I think overall it is a good thing. Failure. Failure. Yes. Of course, in the context of product design. Yeah. Because... Failure always teaches us uh, something new and it gives us more opportunities to solve the problem. And that could be the end of this episode. But okay. uh, Thank but, you very much. <laughs> that was short. Yeah. But maybe let us explain something more about, um, about the failure and how do we see the failure. Mm -hmm. mm, maybe I should start with with a metaphor. Okay. Um, once upon a time, I was uh, speaking with my, uh, with my mom mm? and she was talking that when I was young, of course, not only me, but all of us, um, we were learning a lot in a small amount of time. Yeah. But we can't see this amount of time because it lasts a year, for example. Okay. So you mean like a toddler? Yes. Let's bring an example on learning, on walking. Okay. Learning how so to walk. So something very basic, but yet extremely new for a toddler. Yes. And he, as a young man, doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> um, he simply learns a little step each time, for example, how to stand up, mm -hmm. how to hold a furniture, a, 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 anything that he can, that he could be more stabilized mm -hmm. uh, without knowing how to stand on two legs. So when you say that he doesn't give a crap, that's because he's not afraid of failing, basically. Uh, he's he, not afraid of consequences because he doesn't yet understand them, but still there is no fear of the consequences. There is no fear and he is very little. He has not a lot of distance to the floor. So failing is not something bad. Yeah. When we grow, we always perceive, perceive uh, some probable failures as much greater risk for us than when we were young. Mm -hmm. And this could be um, our main theme for this episode, because failure is something to learn from toddlers. Okay. Uh, they simply learn things by doing something. Mm -hmm. And eventually, um, after a year of learning, they know how to walk and they do it really well. Yeah. So this is something to appreciate. Uh, because now we take it for granted that we can walk. But some time ago, um, 30, 40, 50 years ago, we had to learn it from scratch. So 
of course, it's not the thing in product design that we always have to learn from scratch. Yeah, sure. So it's not one-to-one metaphor, uh, and we do not want you to um, to compare this mm. metaphor to, to new product development. But this is something really strong to to be uh, at least familiar with. Yeah. So. Uh, um... If I understand correctly, the metaphor is more about um, simply how to perceive failure and how to use it as a lesson. Because like a toddler, when she or he learns to walk, it's not like she uh, trips the same way every time. But each each trip, each trip, each fall, each fall um, gives the toddler sort of a new piece of information on how to make the next step more stable or better. It's a, a learning process where there is there is no possibility basically to repeat the same mistakes because eventually you need to get rid of them. Yes, you will repeat them, but uh, the results will be different each time. Yeah, you'll keep perfecting the, yes. the, the moves. We've got another thing to talk about. It, uh, it brings us educational uh, system or something that is uh, more connected with our uh, formal education. Uh, and adult, adulthood, basically. And, yes, uh, adult life. When um, being creative and being um, able to accept failure mm -hmm. is not very common in our adult life. Mm -hmm. Because especially in, in, in Poland, um, there is something, there is a notion of being perfect at school. Yeah. Um, Having perfect grades. Perfect grades, um, being perfect at history, maths, and, uh, mm. and language lessons. Whereas um, every one of us is different and have different strengths. Yeah. But we are... Mm, we are not simply we are not allowed to do failure without consequences um, and where where is the moment that we could do that in our adult life certainly it is difficult to to be um, to be on a failure side all the time because um, sometimes even lives depends on our decisions. So it's not that good to be mm, uh, to, to fail uh, in that period of life. But if you don't en do not encourage young people to to fail and learn from this failure, like they were learning like a to like toddlers, um, this will simply discourage them from taking risks in their lives. And some professions, like especially industrial design and um, product design, all the things that need creativity mm -hmm. to solve complex problems, um, depends on failure somehow. Because we won't push the, war the world forward unless we do some bad steps in this process. Yeah, because like when you said in adulthood, when we make mistakes as just people or professionals, there are real serious dire consequences that we are aware of. And consciously or subconsciously, we basically do everything we can to avoid them. Mm -hmm. But that's in terms of when we understand the consequences and we know what we're doing. Um, but a toddler learning to walk, it's like this huge innovative idea for for a toddler or walking using their legs right mm -hmm. so with creativity as i understand it it's an an adult life you have so much and such uh, such a variety of experiences and skills that when it comes to making or coming up with creative solutions you get to do it a lot more consciously with an awareness of consequences and be able to calculate 
the risk and the potential consequence. And at some point, the consequence isn't that bad, I, I guess, because you're searching for something still novel. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand it like when you have this metaphor of the toddler learning to walk. Mm -hmm. So in an adulthood, you're more like a dancer, a professional dancer, that's still trying to invent new moves or new forms of dance even. Maybe, maybe well, th types of dance that don't exist yet. So you have sure. skills, you have experience, you're agile and everything, mm -hmm. but still you are going to fail a lot of times before someone tells you, yeah, this thing that you came up with, I can call it a dance and that actually makes sense. I like it. It it, it will catch on, you know? Or, uh, so it's a different type of learning, but based on the same principle. If such a dancer would be afraid to fail, he wouldn't invent anything. But is that failure? Mm, it depends on what you will do with that. Mm. If you simply repeat the same failure all the time and not do anything about it, it can be perceived as a failure, as your fault not to deliver the result. Like your inability to learn. Yes. Uh, you just cannot take anything from what you learned and cannot put it into something um, creative, like a mm -hmm. solution to the problem that, that you faced. Um, I think that um, the, the difference between the toddler metaphor um, and, and your comparison to, to the dancer is that a dancer, a, a professional, um, can plan the failure. Because once we are really good at something, we can pretty precisely know when we should try to fail quickly and when we shouldn't. Like uh, having some um, calculations on how to avoid risks uh, by simulating, for example, mm -hmm. in in um, in CAD software. Uh, but um, when planning a prototype, for example, we should simply plan when or where in this prototype things can go wrong. Yeah, just to learn something new from this. Yeah. So so I, I guess this sort of um, uh, fear of failure culture that you've mentioned at the beginning. Is it like something that uh, comes from this business side of things where we need to cut every risk to the minimum or cut it out totally? So we plan, it's difficult to plan for failure for someone who's just looking at, you know, the baseline uh, uh, on a spreadsheet and uh, she's thinking like, okay, this will cost us money and I don't see that this will produ produce anything, you know, physical for us to work with. Let's avoid it. Let's try not to do it, maybe, and let's just go straight for success. It is a good assumption, <laughs> going for success at, for the first time. Uh, but um, it it is always at a cost. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, it is simply a huge cost of development because you have to take two or three paths to this success. So to be sure that one of these paths is eventually successful. Um, because um, if you want all the things to happen w at once, um, our experience and the history says that it's not very probable. Uh, some things may go wrong. Mm. Like uh, even those things that are not very, um, that you are not dependent on. Something from external, uh, from your external uh, world can, can happen. And then you just haven't delivered yeah. uh, the project. Uh, so the, the business is of, is of course important because uh, they are your sponsors, mm -hmm. uh, your client, your... Um, your company is your sponsor for the project and um, they define what is important for them. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, 
it is really crucial to put this on the table that the failure is a part of a process of delivering something new. If you are delivering something um, repeatedly, um, it is easier to avoid some, some mistakes because you already learned from something that you already made. But if you are going into something r totally new yeah. or, or a field that is a little bit new to you, this area is probably some um, some place to, to 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 fail at some at some point. So um, maybe we are um, overusing this word failure, but um, you can also name it like a learning curve. Some processes have a steep learning curve because mm -hmm. you have to learn the a process, this interface of this of the software. Uh, you have to learn some principles um, of um, operating in in some environment and everything that is around it uh, around us. You have to learn something. Yeah, and learning is somehow connected to failing. Okay. Speaking of learning, you've mentioned uh, school and, and the educational system before. So that's something that ingrains in us a specific sort of way or method or uh, a specific approach you should take to learning stuff and doing stuff. There are a lot of different educational systems in the world, but mm -hmm. uh, there are really few places where uh, people are 100% satis satisfied with those systems and how they mm, teach you how to learn in the future, in your professional life, in your adult life. Because most uh, educational systems actually sort of teach us that failure is the worst thing possible. Like getting a bad or a medium grade is not your goal. This is not something that you should aim at. And you also said that you should calculate the failure into your process when designing. Is this something that everyone basically needs to battle personally or is it something companies should enforce in some way? It is usually called a fail culture, I think, mm. um, in companies that they encourage people to fail at some point. Um, but there are some rules like fail quickly, fail fast, fail, you name it. Yeah. But... Um, the um, takeaway from this uh, from this um, framework is that you should learn from it. Uh, there is no possibility to simply fail and waste money. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the case for any company. Uh, there is no company in the world that would allow you to fail for no reason. Yeah. So um, once you decide to design something new. Um, the people who are your sponsors should be aware that you have this little piece of failure um, incorporated in your process. And how, how do you solve the problems or how do you fail is usually your, uh, your solution. I, I simply I don't know any framework that could be uh, taught in school or at school or in any different place that can be systematic. Well, you actually mentioned a framework like failing fast that you've mentioned. It, it is a sort of a framework and failing forward. So within the direction of what you are looking to achieve. Yes. These are sort of frameworks on how to use but they or incorporate are, failure. Yes, but they are giving you a, a, a rather a pace or a time frame mm -hmm. when you should fail on or how fast, but they don't tell you how to solve the problem. Well, yeah, but, but we're not talking about solving a problem. We're talking about how to uh, use uh, in a smart way failure as a stepping stone 
mm -hmm. to solving a problem. So if you will fail fast, meaning uh, early, so you don't do a lot of work in a direction that turns out doesn't make sense. So you <laughs> test that direction in its uh, core sort of assumption ver as early as possible, not to go in a way that doesn't make sense. And just to make sure that the next time you're going to try something new, mm -hmm. test, experiment, prototype, or whatever, you do it in the right direction. So you fail forward to pave the way, maybe a bit to the left, a bit to the right, but in the generally correct direction. So okay. these are, in a, in a way, uh, frameworks for how to treat um, failing as learning, basically. Mm -hmm. And mo moving forward, of course. Yeah. Bringing this um, rather theoretical talking about um, about failing, I think we should connect it with prototyping. Mm -hmm. um, this will enable everyone that are listening to us um, understand a little bit more. Yeah, because prototyping is probably where failure is most important in product design, right? Yes. We, uh, I've got an example of a 3D printed part. Mm -hmm. um, where the manufacturer of this 3D printed part said uh, the wall thickness of this um, of this shell that I've sent them is too small. And what do you do about it? Um, in my th uh, geometry, in my 3D model, I had uh, no space for a greater wall thickness and I didn't want a greater wall thickness because of the mm, elasticity of the part. I wanted the part to be elastic as much as, as possible. So I took a risk and um, said to the manufacturer that, okay, the risk is on, on me. Uh, I have to try whether this is feasible, this is manufacturable or not. This is simply a prototype. If I would assume that, uh, okay, you say that it is not possible to, to make, so let's make it thicker and let's change the design without testing, of course, probably the part will be okay. But what would I learn? Nothing. Well, also it wouldn't be as good as possible. It would be, uh, the, the risk would be lower Mm -hmm. And there, will, there would be fewer steps to success, but the success would also be smaller uh, because the elasticity would be gone. And that's something that you needed in the part. Yes. In my pers from my perspective, um, that would be a failure because I just gave up because someone said that this geometry is not allowed. Um, and uh, finishing with this story, um, I tried. It took us maybe a week to test because it was a uh, not a simple 3D print like on FDM or a Prusa, print, a Prusa printer, but uh, it was um, MJF, so it was more um, time consuming. Mm -hmm. But still, it is a week in in a development yeah. process that was taking a year. So. Not a big deal. And we've learned, both the manufacturer and me, that this wall thickness that I suggested was okay for mm -hmm. this for this particular part. Yeah, sure. I'm not taking this lesson as, okay, I can use this wall thickness for every design that I will uh, imagine, but for this particular one, it is okay. So everyone learned something new. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, achieved what we wanted to achieve, not what we could achieve. And the overall result was even better than the manufacturer of the printer and the manufacturer and, and the uh, service uh, that we um, uh, wanted the, the product to be made, mm -hmm. uh, was saying, okay, this is something that we should also check in our um, design process that 
it is possible to, to manufacture within this um, uh, uh, these parameters that you gave us. So, okay. That's like actually a good point for, uh, I'll go back to the dancer metaphor. Mm. For for a group dance to work, all the dancers need to you know be in sync and have the same sort of mindset. Just like you know, it's basic teamwork. So when you set in a, into a, a process that needs to fail a couple times in order to find new ways to achieve something or just to create something new, then it's much more efficient in every possible way if the whole team has for one, the same approach to failure, and two, trusts each other. Because like you and the manufacturer, there was some tension and they said no. You also said no. And they said, okay, let's 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 do this like you say. We'll see. It's an ex it's a test, it's a prototype. They trusted you and they weren't stubborn, right? They could have said, no, we, d we don't work like that. It's our experience, no way. We just don't. Sure. Uh, sure, but um, we simply would find anyone else that would manufacture that. So, Yeah, that's, um, that's why working with... Uh, with trusted say, people? Yeah, trusted people. Yeah. Yes, it's important. And uh, of course, this story has no failure inside, but uh, it was planned. It was planned that it, it might it happen. It could have been a failure. Yes, it could have been a failure. And nothing could go wrong with that nothing will be uh, no one will be killed yeah, yeah. No, no no one will suffer from from that failure and it's a good failure uh in that uh, in that scale mm -hmm. a, a failure would be if we didn't try mm -hmm. in that context so i think that uh it's worth mentioning that uh sometimes planning a failure doesn't always end in a failure yeah. It brings you something new and uh, good. No. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's also how you build uh, as a company, as a product manufacturer. That's how you basically gain advantage over your competition by coming up with new things that the competition, for example, was too afraid to uh, test, to try, to see if they are even possible. True. Because they are familiar with their process, they know what they can do, yeah. and they think they can't do something else. They think because they didn't try. So they didn't uh, give themselves a permission to fail. Simple as that. Sure. So I guess we can try to sum up a bit, maybe. Sure. Um, there is a culture of seeing failure as something to be avoided at all costs. But in the creative industry, in general, and in product design especially, and especially when it comes to prototyping, this is maybe not something that you should actually like aim for, but you should be, you should consciously include it in your design process. Yes, um, you should. If you don't want to fail, you should ask an OEM manufacturer to manufacture a thing that they all already make in yeah. hundreds, thousands of pieces and simply give them a little bit of change in design, uh, overall design, uh, uh, external case, let's say, and nothing can go wrong. But what will be your product? Yeah, sure. This will be another product that is working, okay, and you've got to invest a lot in marketing so that your product will be selling good. But this has two sort of, uh, there's two sides to this coin. One is that you personally as a designer need to accept failure as a part of your process. Mm -hmm. But that's all great if you sort of uh, are a either a one-man army, one army or you're the boss at your company. Mm -hmm. But when you work at a company where you're a designer and your company doesn't support that, it's very difficult to uh, innovate. It's maybe even impossible to innovate. So this acceptance of 
failure in the process is both personal for an individual and global for a company. So if you are brave enough uh, to introduce a fail culture, a culture in your company, it's cool. Uh, and you want this company to be innovative um, because uh, you take you take care of your company. You just want to be there for extended period of time. So you build that. Mm -hmm. But um, if still your boss is not boss or organization is not uh, giving you a chance to show how that might uh, inspire others and how that might finally impact the innovation in your company. Mm, the best solution is to change the company, probably. Okay. Unfortunately, because um, it is really difficult, mm, especially in those well-established um, markets like in automotive, mm -hmm. um, aerospace, and these more sort of conservative um, fields where innovation takes years, even tens of years, rather than um, months. Mm -hmm. um, so bringing this culture into life in such, uh, such companies, of course, I'm not yeah, saying it's... that uh, automotive companies are not innovative. They are. Yeah. But they've got such a lot of different fields. It's a lot more difficult to introduce innovation yes. in the whole process. So, so because just of the complexity of the structures of the company. Yes, because someone could say that. Uh, how can you say that automotive is not innovative? Yeah, it sure, is, sure. of course. But um, different um, parts of business uh, have different level of um, of being innovative. Mm. For example, if you are uh, designing uh, lights for, for, for cars, mm -hmm. it's of course innovative because they, there used to be simple halogen lights and now we've got laser uh, lights and matrix LEDs. Um, so there is a lot of innovation uh, during, during some time. But when we are talking about, um, I don't know, plastics inside the, the car, there is not a lot of innovation in that uh, in that field. Of course, we have to be more more sustainable uh, nowadays. So we are searching for uh, sustainable materials that are replacing leather um, or any other animal materials. Mm -hmm. But it takes a lot more time uh, to settle up um, or to introduce something new because there are a lot of regulations uh, that simply block those initiatives. So something that you could perceive as a failure sometimes is a system that yeah, you, you have to be in um, or push. But forward. like when you work at a huge corporation and you lack the freedom of creative design with failure, um, it's not like you need to step up to try and introduce that kind of culture in the whole company. No, in you should, team. You should in your team, right? You should just start to try and make it work in your part in your department. Yes, start small, definitely. Um, bring your uh, failed concepts, failed prototypes, and show the people you are working with what did you learn from these things. Um, how your final design was impacted by the things that are yeah. broken on the table. You've learned something from each of the prototypes yeah. and you could include this into your final, uh, like final in, proposition. Like in the old school 80s and 90s movies where the characters were showing their scars uh, and how uh, I, yeah. this happened then, this happened then, and this, is, this happened when I was doing this and that. That's how you basically gain experience. Yes, and the fun fact that uh, I've got also this car <laughs> on my head. So, yes. I hope, I hope you learned something from that one. Learned that I don't like football at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> on For that sure. note, I guess uh, we can... Uh, it's been an interesting talk. So you should basically incorporate failure in your process, in your company. Just make sure it is a learning process and not a waste 
of uh, resources. Yes, treat it, uh, treat it as a part of process and uh, bring innovation to your, mm, uh, to your ideas. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. We must remember that product development is a constant process of exploration and experimentation. If you want to create or discover, you need to embrace failure or you will be paralyzed into stagnation, repetition or creative dullness. For more discussions on industrial design, go visit our YouTube channel, where we invite guests, manufacturers, prototyping companies and fellow designers to talk about industrial design related topics.